then what schools did you go to? I went to Moses Cleveland. Mm -hmm. I went to Alexander Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And I went to John F. Kennedy. And yeah. Were these schools integrated? Uh, Moses Cleveland was. Although, uh, in a, in a kind of funny way, you know, that, but there are still white people living in, in, in Mount Pleasant. Uh, a lot of Slavic people living in Mount Pleasant. And some Italians too, some, because uh, even on our street there were Italians that owned the store at the corner at first. Um, uh, the PTA <coughs> was all white. My mother forced uh, the integration of the PTA. She did? Yeah, because they, were, they would meet only at, these, uh, at each other's homes. They wouldn't meet at the school, they didn't, you know, they operated <coughs> all, you know, separately. And uh, I don't know exactly what her process was, but she's the one who actually forced them to uh, ha have the meetings open to everybody, you nice. know. And so the neighborhood, of course, was then changing. And uh, of course, to where it is now, <laughs> you know. But um, yeah. And, and in school. Did you ever experience racism that you knew of? I don't know that it was, I, I, I think it may have been racism. I know uh, my kindergarten experience, uh, I don't know if it was racism or just the teacher was mean, <laughs> you know, little. Uh, I just remember not wanting to go every day, never wanting to go. But I also remember the first, my first grade teacher, who is still my friend, uh, was a, a black teacher. She was very young and very nurturing. And I remember uh, just that being a wonderful experience. Years later, she was a member of the Black Storytellers. And um, we reconnected. And in fact, I had dinner with her a couple months ago. So she's nice. still in my life, first grade teacher. Wow, so that's the influence of community, how it carries forth, how it used to carry forth. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that it's still some remnants there and it mm -hmm. will get back to that. Um, what church did you all belong to? Core United Methodist. Core United Methodist. Mm -hmm. So that was a really um, strong community-based church as well. Yeah, at that time it was, I, you know. Uh, <laughs> Easter plays and you know all uh, my mother was over the flower guild and just you know so it was a big part of our life. Mm -hmm. and when you when you went to um, church, the, everybody knew your family, oh, your yeah. siblings, and it, it sets a foundation. In the Easter play, you learned how to speak. And, exactly. You know, yeah. besides just mm -hmm. so. so as you, we grew up, and Jeff Alexander Hamilton was my school too. It's no longer there. Uh, right, I'm right. A little sad about that, but and then you went to John F. Kennedy, which I went to Adams, mm -hmm. but Kennedy came a little later. Mm -hmm. And uh, how was it there? Um. Uh. I think well for me personally, high school years were a little rough, and um, just socially kind of rough. Uh, I didn't fit, I felt like. Why didn't you think so? Uh, it, although I still have friends that are from that time. It's just, I, I, um, I think it was more me not knowing who I was. I think if I had a better uh, self-understanding, it would have been okay. Because maybe fitting is not what I have ever done, really, you know. And, but now I'm okay with not really fitting you know, or, or more fitting with, in different ways. So when you say that, unpack that a little bit for your, your the, the younger generation that might see this, does that mean that you didn't know what club to join or did that mean okay. you didn't I, want to join? I think it was more, I didn't want to. And uh, sometimes I would try just to uh, try to fit, but it really wasn't my interest. You know, and my interests were always more to arts kinds of things. You know, so if there had been maybe a better uh, self-knowledge, 
and maybe a, 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 a bigger push. I would have been at Carol Move doing things, <laughs> you know. That's what I was going to say. How would that have been better for you mm -hmm. if you had been at Carol Move? If your mom had seen who you were? Mm -hmm. That creative side. Right. Yeah. And I think it was more so that, uh, not that they didn't see it, but they didn't see that as a, as a avenue where I would be able to make a living or take care of myself. Mm. That that's probably more what it was. It just didn't come, see. Huh? <laughs> it just they just didn't see that as a practical thing to do. Sure. Uh -huh. sure. Yeah. So you kind of managed to get through the high school years. Mm -hmm. And what year did you graduate? Seventy. Seventy uh -huh. was a very good year, huh? <laughs> Large class. Six hundred. How many African Americans was it? The predominantly uh, African yeah. American school. Yeah, very few. Uh, I don't remember any white people, but I know there might have been a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Did you feel like you fit into the world of, of diversity at that point, or did you know? No, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Oh. I like you fit into the world of. Of diversity at that point, or did you know? No, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. Uh, and it was, it. Uh, I probably didn't start feeling myself in that way until maybe in the past twenty years ago. I have forced myself into the world of diversity because I, there were things that I needed to do, mm -hmm. but I was never comfortable. You know, I didn't because I still wasn't sure of myself. Right. You know. how, how do you think that resolved itself? So now we're getting into how you develop. How did you, you, you come out of school and how did you evolve from there? Uh, well, I married an artist. I've been married twice. Mm -hmm. I married an artist. Uh, I was surrounded by you know, people who were doing creative things, and I, I was marginally doing my art at that time. Mm -hmm. I was painting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then I, uh, we divorced, and I came back home. I was living in Atlanta, because I went to college. I uh, was at Spelman. I dropped out to be an artist. Mm -hmm. Didn't quite happen like that, though, <laughs> you yeah. know. But I was in an arts community. Right. And um, when I came back home, uh, I went back to school. And I met my second husband mm -hmm. and started having kids right away. So I had uh, five children. And um, so, that <laughs> you put know, life on hold that kind of, yeah, that put that whole art thing on hold. You know, but it made, a, it made me more involved community-wise because I wanted my children to be around people who had a certain uh, community consciousness and then uh, also cultural consciousness. And so that kind of made me more active in that sense. So you're starting to wake up in terms of really what you would like to see your children have that you didn't have? Yeah. In terms of development. Right. So they had ex more art experiences and then I tried to look at them individual. I think my parents did that too and as best they could. Mm -hmm. um, but I tried to see them as individual people. Well as an artist you were seeing, you were applying your creative <laughs> <laughs> talents to, to rearing them and seeing them as in, so it depends upon what lens you look through mm -hmm. in life. If you're, if you're a business person, you look through a lens and you might shape your children one way, would you say? Yeah, 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 and I was kind of entrepreneurial, but very, <laughs> I thought kind of small, mm -hmm. you know, so I was a vendor, I did uh, baking for the food co I had a stand, you know, I did, but these, none, none of these things brought a substantial amount of money, They, mm -hmm. but they brought a little food money in, you know. And it kept and, uh, you connected and growing. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So. so when do you think your big jump off point of blossoming happened, the big junction, when you felt like you were really waking up to who you were? 
And well, one point was uh, when I went, uh, my children were going to the Montessori school. And uh, I was there all the time. But I was there all the time because I was having so many problems at home. So it was like a safe space. And one day the director asked me, uh, would I be interested in uh, going to school to be a teacher? And I said, well, yeah, but I don't have the money for it, you know, all these reasons. And she said, well, we'll send you if you uh, agree to work for four years for the school. And so they sent me. And because I'd already been to college for like almost two years, mm -hmm. uh, I ended up, ended up getting a ba my bachelor's degree and a master's degree in Montessori that was paid for because I was part of that system. And uh, so that, uh, and which also put me in a, um, in a community that was much uh, broader in a sense, because uh, many of the students that I worked with, well, classmates, some of them were international. Uh, not a lot of them had money. <laughs> So starting to see a different a world outside of, you know, my community. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily uh, that I was a part of them, but I was just starting to see how people function in different ways. Um, and that helped to shape the things and experiences you passed down to your children. In a sense, it freed me up in a way because I saw how people who felt free to, to do things and I know that some of it came because they had money, but some of it just came because they just felt that they could do things. Just felt they could do things, and so they did them, you know. So I didn't have money, <laughs> but I started to think that I could do some things, you know. Um, How did that manifest? Mainly with poetry at first, you know, and I started to... Uh, writing and then I started going out on that poetry circuit. I was at the coffee houses and whatnot and got opportunities to, you know, speak at different schools and it just kind of blossomed a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, which kind of led into the storytelling, you know, because uh, people would say, when are you going to tell some more stories? So I was doing poetry, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, it kind of, it just seemed like a, a natural kind of segue. Um, and tell me, how, at what point in your life was this? Are you, were your children grown? Or? Uh, they were, no, they weren't grown. Uh, they were e elementary through their teen years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, as it blossomed with you in that uh, world of poetry and storytelling, did your children um, respond to that? And well, from that? you know, they were te when they were teenagers, their response was a little bit, uh, you know, making fun of mom, <laughs> you know, so they would quote parts of poems and uh, use that intonation that, and it was more of a joke. But I think, you know, in a way they appreciated it because they, they're all creative. And uh, even my daughter, my oldest, she has written some things and she dances and, you know, and, uh, and they're all creative in their own way, you know, so. The influence was there. Yeah, but they were being teenagers, so. Sure. And teenagers are, we'll be teenagers. We can, exactly. We can all use our imagination what that was. Exactly. Push and pull for their own independence. Exactly. And because they were close in age. Mm -hmm. So they were teenagers together. Oh so, boy. you know, that was. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, having them all together in one age was pretty, you know, you could kind of got through it as a unit. Then, mm -hmm. And you could sort of um, probably be supportive of one another. Right. Through that process. Right. right? Now, they saw me going to school, so it wasn't a, a far-fetched idea for them to go. You know, it made it made it easier for them. I think. Sure. Yeah. In fact, they told me uh, that they're going to go to school before they had kids. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> they said, because they're not going to be dragging their kids up and down the road like I had to drag them. Well, I said, well, you got the lesson. Good. They got the lesson. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yeah. So tell me, so now you, you know, things are kind of percolating in your life a little differently. We can see that it was much different from the, you know, growth start for you. And, and we can see that it's starting to percolate. And, mm -hmm. and you're in the classroom. How did you function in the classroom, the Montessori classroom, were you able to bring that, it seems like it would lend itself more to the creative side of you. It did, it did, and, um, and it allowed me to uh, begin to look at children in a different way, you know, in terms of uh, what they're capable of, or what, what they need to be exposed to, and, uh, you know, what kind of tools they needed to have around them to grow. Rather. what that would be like. So uh, for the person listening, we'd, we'd like to learn through your lens. Mm -hmm. Well, for one thing, they needed to have the experiences of, um, well, I, I gave them a lot of arts experiences. I think I took them to events, even though I didn't have money, I'd go to the free events. So, uh, you know, if the uh, Grace Lee Mims was doing a concert at, uh, you know, at the music school settlement, then I'd take them or so things it, like that. It was exposure. Exposure. You yeah. You were able to, you think that parents should make sure that their children have a broad, an opportunity to have a broad exposure? Yeah, the better, the more they can see, the more they can grow. Right, and uh, that's right. And also making sure they're around people as much as possible who kind of share your vision in terms of, so I, I was in a, you know, I worked at the co-op, I volunteered at the co-op, so I, I, I wanted them around healthy people or, you know, eating healthy. Uh, uh, they were involved in rites of passage, so I wanted them to have that cultural, the connect, you know, know who they were in the midst of, uh, I already knew that uh, they were in the midst of people t trying to tell them who they were, that w and it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want them to, I wanted them to know that they could reject that story from others, you know. Um, they had permission mm -hmm. to be yeah, to be who they felt that they could mm -hmm. be. Yeah. They didn't have to fit the mold. Yeah. Including yours. Yeah. Because you. Right. Right. Not, yeah, not mine. Provided yeah. that open framework for them to express themselves. Have your children, are they all different? They are. They are.